uh, incredibly gutsy end of the game there for Jalen Clark. Uh, what's, uh, how, how much uh, fortitude did it take for him to make that free throw and play defense? Well, to be honest with you, um, the rebound was what's, you know, was the key. You know, he doesn't stand around and watch. You know, a lot of guys stand around and watch. Assuming Tiger's going to make a wide open four foot. But, uh, you know, Jalen's his pursuit of the ball is probably the best thing he does right now on offense. Um, that, that lets him exploit his athleticism in a positive way. Uh, I was, he's a really good free throw shooter. Uh, you know, I know he's a freshman and all, but, uh, you know, today's kid, you know, you played for Etiwanda and Centennial the way he did. Um, you know, you play for the Compton Magic. He's played in a big game. So uh, I, he, you could see he settled down on the second one. He, uh, he is a very good free throw shooter. So, Ben, I wasn't, that, I wasn't that nervous about that. I wanted him to make the first and miss the second so they couldn't take it out of bounds. But uh, you got a lot of defensive stops in the last few minutes. That kind of allowed the crack to, to uh, happen. What, what uh, were you doing defensively as a team? So a few times we tried to change things up. You know, we put Jalen Clark in at the five uh, a couple times to where we could switch everything. Um, you know, I was trying to throw the kitchen sink at him, changing up our coverages, some zone, um, you know, everything we could to try to slow him down. Cause you know, Remy was on one of those roles, man. And so was Alonzo Verge. So, um, and then, then you had uh, House hit a three and, and Woods was, I think he missed his last three. There was a time that Woods and House, their auxiliary guys were four for four from three. It was just their night there for a while. But, uh, you know, the only score that matters is, is on only thing that matters on that stat sheet, guys, is the final score. So I kept telling our guys down the stretch, Ben, you cannot come back if you don't maximize possessions because they're, they're, you can't shut them out. So we, we, we had to, we stopped turning the ball over. I think we had one in the last 13 minutes. Johnny had a charge. It's really our only turnover in the last 13 minutes. Joe Reedy, go ahead. Nick, uh, congratulations on win 400. Is it, with the defense and free throw kind of a trademark victory of yours with how you won at Cincinnati and Murray State? Uh, yeah, I guess. You know, we've I, in getting older. It's my 18th year. Had a lot of different different type of teams. You know, my first year, I thought uh, I thought I was going to be the next Coach Wooden. Man, we averaged 82 a game, uh, led the nation in or second in nation in assist and field goal percentage. And everybody graduated, and I realized I was far from Coach Wooden. Um, now I'm just trying to make him, make him and his, his family here uh, proud. But um, it's a long road, I guess. Uh, I don't really think about that stuff. But, um, you know, it's very, I was very nice of Martin Jarman to present me with a ball in the locker room after the game. And then just um, with Martin, he had 25 there maybe into the last eight minutes, and you shut him down. What was the big key to that? Uh, it's tough, you know, he's, he, he's got to do so much. And a lot of his shots have a high degree of difficulty because of his size. Um, so it's just, you know, it's one of those guys, he, he, he can get on real, obviously you say he can get on a real serious run. Um, you know, I don't know if it's, if I'd say it's maybe a combination of us doing a little bit better job on him or him just having to do so much that he gets a little tired. I'd say it's a combination of both. Mike. Hey coach, sorry about that. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Cody Riley and Mac Entian? Uh, everything they put up towards the basket, you know, they made uh, free throws, field goals. Uh, what are your thoughts, especially Entian uh, during that one stretch in the second half? Well, obviously, you know, Mac, Mac's stretch in the second half while Cody had foul trouble was the reason we were able to win the game, right? We were able to gain ground with Cody on the bench, which is, you know, something we've got to grow towards, you know, since the loss of Jalen Hill. And I think Mac's going to be able to get, get us there. You know, he just needs minutes played. As he gets minutes played, our guys get more confident in him. Like, he's got a nice touch, and he was 0 for 6 from the foul line because he was a nervous wreck. You see tonight he's 3 for 3. You know, the, so, uh, but I, one thing that don't show up in the stat sheet, Mike, was, was Mac's defense. 
against the pick and roll, which is really hard against Remy Martin and Alonzo Verge. So he did a great job down the stretch with his pick and roll defense that allowed us uh, to get some stops with him in there. It was huge for us. Um, you know, they're six for, what are they, nine for nine from the field and eight for eight from the, from the foul line. What I would say is we got to get them all, we got to get both those guys the ball more. That, that's what, <laughs> that's how I look at that. Sam, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, you were saying after the, the Washington game, I think it was six for 18 from the free throw line, you were kind of shocked. You never really seen a team do that. Is it ironic that you score 11 of your last 16 from the line tonight? And did you work especially hard on it in practice this week? Without Sam coming into that Washington game, and I still think right now this is the best free throw shooting team I've had in 18 years. So, you know, the Washington game, was an aberration uh, really for us, to be honest with you. I mean, it, we, it, we've shot it well all year. I think we're 73 and a half percent coming into tonight. Um, so it did not, it, 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 you know, I thought the key though, Sam was getting fouled. The key was getting to the foul line, getting some stops and having possessions where we did not waste possessions. Once we stopped turning, I think we only had one turnover in the last 13 minutes and um, we stop taking bad shots, high degree of difficulty shots. We're a, we're a team that's hard to defend. As you can see, you look at Cody and Max stats. So, but you take bad shots, you're not going to get fouled. Tracy. Hey coach, you know, I love to have fun with your memory. Uh, is this the first, have you ever won a game where you led for the first time with two, less than two seconds left? in the game? I don't know. I don't think so, buddy, but I do not know the answer to that. Not, <laughs> I think, I think that happened one time at Cincinnati where we tied somebody, we ran a play and dunked it at the buzzer and then won an overtime, but I'm not sure if we trailed the entire game that game. Yeah. I just remember we ran a play. It looked like I actually knew what the heck I was doing. We got a dunk at the buzzer and then we won an overtime. Um, but I'm not sure if we trailed the entire game. I would probably say no. I'd probably say no. Well, it looked like you knew what you were doing by uh, going to a zone in that last possession. Uh, talk a little bit about what went into that, the thoughts of doing that in that last possession, that ASU. You know, he, I'll tell you my opinion um, from a lifetime of doing this, sitting next to my dad at two years old behind his bench. So I've been sitting behind a bench my whole life. They called a foul on the rebound, and Tiger got fouled. Uh, we tied the game on that. Um, I just felt that uh, with their speed and quickness, they were going to drive the ball and jump into us and they were going to call a foul on us. So uh, I did not, obviously, I did not, it was a tie game. I didn't want to lose the game at, at the foul line. I think if you're going to lose the game, you got to try to make somebody make a shot to beat you. Uh, so that was my, that, you know, I told the guys in the huddle, that's why I want to do it. I also, you know, we were pretty confident we knew what they were going to do against the zone. Um, and Jules and Tiger in the front of the zone with the pick and roll uh, from their blind side. <clears throat> and they did a great job defensively at the front of the zone dealing with, dealing with that. They, they, we drew up what was coming and the guys, and the key was getting a rebound. But yeah, I did that trace because I figured that they were going to just drive it at us and the whistle was going to blow. Ben? Always worked though, buddy. If we lose, you said, what the heck's he doing in the zone, man? We won, and I'm going to get something to eat. You talked before about the basketball gods. Do you feel like maybe you were rewarded tonight for doing things the right way in, in a game that you, you know, probably would have lost 99 times out of 100? Um, look, they, they, they made 10 threes. They shot 46%. They only had five turnovers. Uh, Remy has 25, Verge has 19, and somehow we won. Um, there's a lot of ways to win. Uh, you know, I think tonight was, uh, I think the guys, you know, what I want them to learn was we have to do what I tell them to do. If we don't do what I tell them to do, uh, once we started, they started doing that, we get, we had a chance. And the second thing is, man, you know, you get in the NCAA tournament, hopefully we get there. You got to realize the game's never over. So a game like this, you can draw upon, right? You know, here's how we came back. We played 13 minutes with one turnover against Arizona State. We got a shot up. We got to the foul line. We were able to stop the clock. We got better defensively. Um, 
because, you know, our, our crazy job, you know, we, we play, we don't play best of seven series like the Clippers and the Lakers. So hopefully it could help us down the road with our confidence. If we, you know, you got to come from behind. Go to Joe for our last question. Nick, you guys are now tied atop the conference with uh, two weeks left. Do you think the experience of last year with that late run and getting in the position at this point will help you guys going into these late stages? Oh, I don't know. Um, you know, I think I, I do think what helps us is um, that, uh, you know, guys have been through it. You know, I think that Tiger and, and, and Jaime Jules and these guys, you know, last year I kept telling you guys here, and they were that Tiger hadn't played. Jules and those guys, they got they were guys that came off the bench. Wilkes and Hands took all the shots, or they threw it into Moses. Um, you know, they th it took them a while to realize that you got to be a you got to play forty minutes and you got to be accountable. You're not just a role player off the bench. Even Cody. So now you know now we do have experience. So hopefully that will help us. Um, but the thing that's going to help us most is is Cody being healthy, and uh, that and and us realizing that uh, what, what wins games, the talent is very equal in college basketball outside of probably Gonzaga and Baylor. Um, that uh, discipline wins games, execution, execution of what the coaches are telling you to do to give yourself a chance to win, is what wins games. So I think they learned that last year, but sometimes, you know, they, look, uh, this happens to all teams. Sometimes you, you have slippage. You have slippage and guys don't realize how hard it is to win. I mean, you throw Arizona State's record out the window, guys. They got the player of the year in the league. Verge is impossible to guard. Bobby does a great job. You know, their record's irrelevant, man. I mean, they, they're hard, and it's a very bad matchup for us because our foot speed is very limited.